Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills Instructor. Today the exercise is to make some bannock. And on page 68 in Bushcraft, a book I authored about 25 years ago, it originally came under Northern Bushcraft, and now you find it under Bushcraft, uh, there is uh, the recipe for making bannock. But the fire lay that we are about to construct will cook pizzas, will cook anything that requires to be baked. In the issue of the northern forest, you have a problem finding things that make really nice coals. And the one thing that makes the best coals is the bark from the black poplar. The wood from this particular tree is not uh, very good as a firewood, but the bark glows in a, a way where it gives a, perhaps even a superior type of uh, coal making material. First we should make a bed of coals, so we start by laying down a bunch of the pieces of bark. The amount you lay down of course is tied in with the number of people you're going to cook for. So here we have one layer and another layer that's spaced so that as fires burn they can, um, material can fall between the layers and uh, the idea here is to get a bed of coals as quickly as possible, sort of thing. Uh, you can also make a bed of coals with finger-thick willows. There we have uh, the base, which uh, will likely ignite fairly readily. We then proceed to light the fire. We have here your standard kindling uh, the, uh, in the form of a twig bundle. We We'll set fire with the bundle using a metal match. The metal match is worth thousands and thousands of fires. And when you want to train yourself, you'll find this is one of the most invincible methods there are to light a fire. We have to work on top, and then we flip everything on its back. We put on a bunch of, of twigs. And the, some of these are volatile enough to be almost a, like a form of gasoline and there we, we don't want to be waiting for our fire to manifest itself so we put finger thick sticks. Generally parallel, we don't have much wind today. And then we stack a lot of bark on top of this, depending on how much cooking and how much quantity of bark uh, We could make the fire smaller if you were cooking for yourself alone. The, uh, the bark is left with spaces to uh, make the burning action go between the pieces, get them all glowing as quickly as possible. And now we will have to give the fire some time to burn down to coals, which probably is about 10 or 15 minutes. We are about to mix up our ingredients according to the recipe found in Bushcraft, page 68. Uh, bannock is a universally known recipe wherever there's flour available. The uh, bannock actually comes from the uh, word paniculum. Here we have ordinary flour. We're going to, there's two methods of, of making uh, batter. One where you uh, find everything sticks to your mixing bowl. Here I'm measuring out a certain amount of flour with the idea that actually a recipe calls for a cup of flour, moderately a heaping teaspoon of baking powder and some salt. Here I'm going to use the approach where I'm going to use about three quarters of a cup of water which will absorb the flour that we want and when it reaches a certain thickness that we can lift it out we, whoops, we have uh, we only want about three quarters of a cup there. 
So we have measured out a large quantity of flour. You could have a bag, open it up. The bag might be waterproof and you uh, pour in the amount of water and swirl it until the amount of the flour absorbs all the water. Then that's lifted out here. We have two moderately heaping teaspoons that are put in the center of the flour. And we're making roughly a double batch. And then a quarter teaspoon of salt or thereabouts. And a little bit of salt. For people who are on a salt-free diet, you could leave out the salt altogether. And then a little bit of sugar will help it brown to give you an idea of um, the progress in the cooking. Now we stir up these ingredients in the center of the of the bowl a little bit, keeping to the very center. Make a depression in the bowl in the flour and pour in the given quantity of water. Usually using a finger or a stick. Here we do have a spoon, but we will tend to use the handle of the spoon and we swirl this in here until the water absorbs the amount of flour it wants to become stiff enough to transfer from the stirring bowl. So the baking powder is acting and bubbling up very so you have to be patient here in the sense now the dough has gotten so stiff that it is uh, uh, can be rolled out of this out of the pan. Put a little bit of oil. If you don't have oil, put a layer of flour. Put a little bit of lard, a tablespoon of lard will do. In the winter time, you tend to use more oil to give your your um, um, uh, to give more oomph to your to your bannock. Here we can spread the. Now this could be a pizza. It could be many things. They're all cooked in the same way. Spread it out. Maybe sprinkle it with fruit, cinnamon stuff. And put the lid on. Spread out our coals, leaving half the coals for putting on top. Ooh, that's nice and hot. Because it's so hot, we will transfer it with the shovel and put it there, and then pile coals on top. Bury that. Yeah, the situation here is that we uh, have had this going for 10 minutes, and we will now find that uh, what the situation is with regard to having such a quality of coals surrounding our, our pan. We, Remove some of it, get it out of the fire. If we had leather oven mitts and so on, we perhaps would find the, that we could bring this out with our... Uh, try not to get too much ash in our cooking. And... Uh, oops! <laughs> And then here we got probably, uh, uh, in this case, if sometimes you find that the top isn't cooked, we prop it up in front of a glowing situation. Or here we might brown the top a little bit more. So we pile up our and lean the pan with a uh, uh, sometimes you find that things can get overcooked on the on the bottom side and undercooked on top so we may tilt this towards the fire Handle is hot. Uh, 
and build up our coals in front a little bit better. If things are done perfectly, we sometimes find that the uh, pizza, the bread, the cookies, the, the cake, and all that sort of stuff gets baked while it's covered with coals. All right, we have um, baked our bannock under coals. We found that maybe the top was uh, a little more pale than we liked, so we have propped the frying pan and rotated it on occasion. The handle should be quite hot, and we now figure that our, our um, bannock must be done, definitely nicely done on top. It could be a little um, more. Notice that the grease that we had caused the bannock to adhere to the pan to a certain extent. and. And actually, by knocking the pan, you should be able to dislodge it. So we have here the uh, one serving, you might say, of of a uh, of bannock, and a little bit hot to handle with the hands alone. And we break a piece, and perhaps with a little jam, the gut filler of the forest, the least, the least expensive of means to, to fill one's stomach. Some strawberry jam. Of course, you could make your own jams from what you find in the bush. You could have mixed berries into the bannock. Most certainly tasty. And if I ate all of that, I'd be ready to work for six, eight hours on the amount of energy I'd get out of this. And that's how you make a bannock. One way out of about 15.